Um, we're delighted that you joined us. Um, good morning to the committee. Uh, glad you're here today. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to record our meeting today. We have some of our committee members who are unable to be with us, so this will give them an opportunity to um, view the presentations and make comments. Um, obviously, the whole point of having these presentations done is that we as a committee will then discern where the gaps in services are um, and where we can help support the regions in these services. So um, this was really important to us to make sure that you understood what each of the 12 regions are doing in the youth space and then we will then as a committee determine exactly how we can um, move forward and support them. So in September we will have the remaining five presentations. We have seven presentations today. As I mentioned, we're on a time clock. Kelly has a two-minute um, marker so that when we're two minutes prior to the end of your 15-minute presentation, we will hold that up, and then there'll be two or three minutes to um, ask questions. If you have additional questions, go ahead and jot them down on your um, PowerPoint um, slides here, and uh, we'll collect those and ask the group later. Okay? Any questions on this? I just wanted to start the meeting then, um, right before Region 4, I wanted to celebrate with the group. Um, Jack Medina, for the second year in a row, achieved the Jack National 505 standard. I know, great job. We're really proud of the efforts um, of the regions, and it was just a real coup. Um, in addition, Jack Indiana received more outlays than any other um, state.
Work councils, our career and technical educators, post secondary institutions, our leaders, local economic developers, and community based organizations. We want to do that in a manner to clarify our roles so that we're not uh, duplicating what's already being done, but finding out how to align and build on each other's strengths. Now, for youth, we want to remind and refocus on the emerging, our future workforce to meet employers' demands as well. So we'll work with our regional community stakeholders to inform parents, educators, and both in-school and out-of-school students on the career opportunities and pathways available in our region. In collaboration with all of our partners, we want to promote these career pathways with multiple on and off ramps to, again, both in-school and out-of-school students. And we want to be sure that we support technical skills training that incorporates those behavioral skill developments and work and learn opportunities, especially with our So taking a moment to focus on in-school youth, our board's vision for in-school youth is for them to complete secondary school, get some post-secondary education, and certainly uh, ending with employment. Our in-school youth program is the Jobs for America's program, the JAG program. We know that the JAG program focuses on high school completion, exposure to various careers, development of leadership skills, employability skills, and really developing our future leaders uh, for their families, employers, and communities. So the JAG program serves students who have been identified with barriers uh, that may not allow them to successfully graduate. And we certainly serve a diverse range of in-school students through the JAG program, including students with disabilities. <coughs> we are adding another JAG program this year, so that will bring our in-school JAG program to eight schools with one alternative ed school. Um, we will not spend more than 25% of our youth funding on in-school, and we anticipate serving about 375 youth this year. We think the strength of the JAG program uh, really goes beyond the success of the graduation rate, but the larger impact is really on the lives of students for themselves and for the communities in which they reside. As far as awareness uh, that we have, we'd say it's probably looking at the brand of our JAG specialists. They are involved so intensely with the students. We want to make sure that we can keep them motivated. Um, we also have some difficulty in finding long-term mentors with students and matching those uh, internships with really the students we also have many small schools in our region, so sometimes it's difficult to implement a JAG program. I wish we could see it in every school. But JAG's not the only thing that we do to help you. Um, we have several things. I've passed around a couple of uh, publications that we've developed to help students know about opportunities, especially in advanced manufacturing. That's the wealth driver in our region. Um, we have youth summits. Those are all these summits. They're embedded in the school, so uh, we introduce the, the youth in the schools to the occupations. Uh, in demand in our region. We have employers talk to them about what's important to them. We have manufacturing day in our, our um, region. And as I said, developing these publications, which we've developed with youth input. So it's not something we've developed and handed to them, something they've developed with us. And then uh, really working in collaboration with so many partners that we have in the region. So there are five new uh, WIOA elements to support in school youth. Um, that is education offered concurrently with and in the same context of workforce preparation. That's incorporated in school youth through our short-term work experience, employability skills training, and internships. Financial literacy, we again implement that through the JAG program by bringing in specialists from banks and financial uh, institutions. Entrepreneur skills training, <coughs> and again, bringing into the JAG classrooms the guest speakers from the Small Business Development Center and other entrepreneurs. Uh, services for labor market and employment information, we utilize the AI and reality as an online tool um, that provides information on lifestyle, career interests, and those salaries. We've developed a regional top 60 occupations that again gives information about our labor market. And then as we bring youth into our work one centers and they can see the resources available to them to understand the labor market. Activities that help transition youth to post-secondary education uh, is integrated again into the JAG curriculum uh, with scholarship applications, financial aid assistance, helping them prepare for their entrance exams, uh, and understanding independent living skills so they'll be successful in post-secondary education. Um, outputs and outcomes, these are pretty much the JAG program outputs and outcomes, so I'm not going to go through those. Um, you'll have them to take a look at. Uh, one of the other questions is, you know, how do we evaluate our success? Um, we do that certainly by uh, talking with our specialists, being involved in the classroom, looking at all the databases, looking at the reports from our managers and our coordinators, and just being extremely involved. Our region's been very successful through the JAG program.
program, having the, received those regional 505 uh, awards, we've had outstanding specialists recognized, we've had outstanding seniors. So we feel it's, it's been a pretty strong program and uh, it's helped us to meet all of our real and new pleasures as well. I think now we're gonna move on to Alex Williams and Melissa. Act program um, and uh, which is done through a youth reality fair. 
entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial skill training materials uh, through the Small Business Administration. Um, and I think we'll also need to be spending some time to, to make sure that we have really sound curriculum for the out of school year. Uh, services that provide labor market and employment information. Uh, again, this is uh, similar to what you heard on the in-school youth. You're going to have the Hoosier Hop 50, the region's top 60, the demand occupations that we run. The last one there is the activities to help youth prepare to and transition post-secondary education. Uh, we have information within our uh, uh, centers. The career advisors or case managers are taught uh, and know how to give this information and help individuals so that they're, one, making sure that they're actually ready um, and able to um, uh, go into that environment and learn and stay with it so that we uh, make sure we discuss that information with them. The outputs and outcomes, uh, you can see there, I don't need to read those to you, but the strings, um, the work and learn activities we believe are strength of our program and it's the greatest interest for the youth. We think it's the greatest success because um, they get to actually get their hands into something and start learning what they're really interested in. Uh, and also start early on the education so they see how those things go together. The weakness uh, is recruitment for the out-of-school youth and the retention of the youth program. You'll see in your packet you have um, the Work One magazine and there uh, in that packet uh, is a, a little bit of a marketing uh, outreach tool uh, that we use to try and get the youth interested in the program, but we're, we're going to do some focus groups and some uh, surveys trying to find out what really makes uh, individuals interested in our program. Uh, our goal this year is to serve at least 250 um, individuals. Our board has four standing committees. The executive committee um, that meets in between the regular board meetings to prepare uh, information for the board to the finance committee that oversees all financial aspects of the organization, uh, including uh, reviewing the annual audit report. Then we have a one-stop operator committee. The role of that committee is to oversee the one-stop delivery system, uh, the attainment of the goals to achieve all of the WIOA objectives and performance outcomes, as well as those goals of the board that uh, I went through. And then, of course, to ensure that we're in compliance with all pertinent legislation and regulations. Then our last committee, or our fourth committee, is our youth committee. Um, the youth committee uh, has its own vision statement, and that is to have youth educated, skilled, and prepared to reach their full potential in work and in life. And their mission is preparing today's youth for tomorrow's workforce. The youth committee um, was actually the youth council that was under WIA. It was a very active youth council, so they agreed to come on as our youth committee. And the roles and responsibilities that they adopted was to recommend the design, development, and implementation of programs that benefit all youth. So as you've heard, some of the things that we do are funded with WIO dollars, but we like to reach beyond that. Um, they recommend the design of a community workforce development system, again, for that full range of services and opportunities for all youth. Um, we they also are recommending ways to leverage additional resources and to ensure that we're coordinating among the schools, our public programs, and any community-based organizations that are dealing with youth. Um, they also recommend how to coordinate the services and who will be our eligible youth providers in our region. They provide ongoing leadership and support um, to ensure that we're delivering a high quality program. So that is our piece on what we're doing in Region 4. We're really happy to entertain any questions. Hopefully, did I make it within 15 minutes? You did. Good job. <laughs>
uh, committee does is we go into the JAG classrooms. So sometimes our meetings are actually in the JAG classrooms, and that's a way for us to get the input of those students. One other quick question. Um, you said that you had trouble getting long-term mentors for some of the have you thought about challenging your board members to be a mentor? Oh, good question. Um, the, we have it, but that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it might be a great way. And also, I think it would give them a great insight as to how the kids that they're dealing with, that make young people, that we're doing the dealing, see what they're doing. With all the struggles are. We, yeah. we do like to tell some of those personal stories of the youth, but that would certainly We've had some success working with Big Brothers Big Sisters. Cool. Um, 